Hello, and welcome back to Nerd News. Today, we have the first look at Pixar's Elemental coming June 2023, and we have some controversy surrounding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and it's graphical issues, although mostly leaning into things like frame rate and glitching. Let's get started. First up, we have Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, remake of the PSP game being brought up to pretty much every console, uh, PS4, 5, Xbox, and Switch, and I believe Steam. Uh, that comes out December 13th. We got a new trailer for it today, and it looks really good. Um, I feel like this game was being marketed as a remaster, but honestly, it looks more like a complete remake uh, in the new engine from the Final Fantasy VII remake. But the game looks fantastic. They showed off a lot of new summoning stuff, some uh, new combat Looks really good. Can't wait to play this game. I picked up the PSP copy like a year and a half or two years ago um, around the time Final Fantasy VII Remake came out and just hadn't gotten a chance to play it. So this will be a good opportunity for me to play it and in a better way because I don't really like playing portable games that much. Really looking forward to this and again December 13th it comes out. Looks really good. And next up we have the Splinter Cell 20th Anniversary and in it, they showed some concept art for the Splinter Cell remake coming uh, eventually. They don't really have a date or anything like that. Obviously, it's very early in, in development. Uh, they really just gave us a l couple of shots of early concept art. Uh, I don't know if we've heard about this remake before officially. I, I feel like I heard rumors of the remake, but I think this is the first time it's been announced officially or addressed officially. Uh, but again, it's very far off in development. Uh, they didn't really have a whole lot to show for this, uh, especially with it coming into the 20th anniversary. I kind of thought they would have had, like, if, if obviously not released, then at least, like, plans to be able to show it so that it could be, like, releasing in the next year or two. I guess that's a little optimistic, but it's been so long since we've gotten a Splinter Cell game. Uh, knowing the 20th anniversary was coming up, I think it would have made more sense for them to have started development on this earlier and had it ready for like this year or next year. Either way, I really like the original Splinter Cell game. I didn't like the later ones, um, but I did really enjoy the first one. I played on the PlayStation 2 and I replayed it on the Xbox recently, sort of recently. Really great game, can't wait for the remake. The concept art looks really good. And for the most part, they say it's going to be pretty much the same, just with tweaks to the story and a improved gameplay with uh, newer features. The, the characters will act a little bit more realistic, uh, which sounds good to me. Again, really like Splinter Cell, so looking forward to this, but it's probably not going to be for quite a while. And next up we have the Pokemon controversy, uh, because of course what would a Pokemon release be without a controversy? People are arguing that the current look of the game is bad, because it kind of does look glitchy. Uh, there's a video playing here, but it looks like it's glitching a lot. This is post day one patch, so this is what the game is going to look like today when you start playing it. Um, it doesn't appear like this is at all times, but uh, the reports are basically that this happens quite a bit and that it's not great. Uh, the gameplay itself and the, everything about the game seems to be really good, but there's this the graphical issues seem to be a problem. And it's started a conversation of, is this Game Freak? and their ability to develop for the system, or is it because the Switch is getting outdated and we need newer hardware? I have a lot of problems with the Switch. Um, I think a lot of games struggle to run on the Switch optimally. Uh, we see it with ports all the time, and there's an argument to be made that these, these ports aren't being optimized fully because, because of the cost that is associated with doing so, and we've heard reports that it's kind of hard to make your game run properly on the Switch, uh, at least probably in handheld mode as the assumption I make when I hear these reports, but it seems like things aren't as easy as you would think to develop for with the Switch. But in this specific instance, I think it's more just a game freak issue. Not to say that the Switch it doesn't need a upgrade because power-wise it is very far behind the current generation of course, but it was behind the last generation as well, uh, being around the same power level as the Wii U, which was really a, like a slightly better PS3. Um, it, it, it's really not in comparison with a PS4, and 
most third parties do develop for something more like that. Uh, but this isn't a third party game. This is a game developed specifically for the Switch. So we have to look in the context of games developed specifically for the Switch. And we have seen some really impressive games released on the Switch by Nintendo. Things like Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade 2 I heard ran not the best, but uh, Torna the Golden Country, from what I understand, ran pretty well, and Xenoblade 3 apparently runs pretty well. Uh, in this case, Pokemon has not developed a single game on the Switch that runs really well. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are probably the best. There is still quite a bit of pop in, in those games, but the, that is by far the best running game on the Switch from Pokemon, uh, from the Pokemon company themselves, from Game Freak. Sword and Shield had tons of problems. It was very, it was very heavily noted how many problems that they had with that game. The graphics themselves, you know, everyone remembers the 64 tree to just general pop in and, you know, uh, Pokemon not looking the way they should, you know, movements of being off and stuff like that when in the wild. So we know that Sword and Shield was already not running the best. Uh, and typically with Pokemon, the first game in the system doesn't run super well. It's usually not the best, but then by the second set of games, they have everything pretty much figured out. Uh, that did not happen with the Switch. I think people expected that to happen, and it just didn't. Uh, it just It's running just as poorly as Sword and Shield did, and in some instances, it seems like it's actually running worse. However, this game is also doing a lot more than Sword and Shield, so there is that. I'm no dev, obviously. I, I don't know anything about making games, but looking back at Pokemon's catalog as someone who has played since Gen 1, Pokemon has never looked good on the system that it's on. It has never been a top of the, a top tier uh, graphical powerhouse for any of its systems. No release for Pokemon is they're usually a subpar at best, with only a few really breaking through that and being like actually decent looking games for the system. Clearly something's not right. I do think the games look like they are a lot of fun. I planned on buying them, I obviously, and I will play them, and they probably will be a lot of fun. But Pokemon has never been a graphical powerhouse, and I think people need to either accept that or maybe just move on from Pokemon. Not to say that you can't complain about a company or the things that they do, because of course you can. I do it all the time. It's good for you. Companies suck. Game Freak sucks. But they're not going to do more. They're just not. At the way the games sell, they're not going to do more. They're not going to push the what they can do because they don't have to. So you either need to accept that they don't have to, so they're not going to, and just enjoy the games for what they are, or stop buying the game. That's really it. If you don't like the way it looks and that bothers you that much, just don't buy it. There's not really anything else you can do about it. It, it it sucks when a major franchise like that can just kind of do whatever it wants because it's going to sell anyway. And to that point, I'm going to buy it because it's going to sell anyway. And I'm not going to miss out on Pokemon. I love Pokemon. There's few joys in life. I'm not taking one away because I think the graphics are bad. It, it doesn't mean that much to me. But if it does mean that much to you, just stop playing Pokemon. It, that's the only way that they're going to change anything is if sales dip low enough that they decide they need to do more. But the games are too fun and Pokemon is too big. I don't see that happening. So if you want to be the one to skip out on Pokemon, be my guest. I personally just don't care enough about the graphics of the game to skip the games. That doesn't justify them, but it's just how the world works. If you don't want them to do that, you have to speak with your wallet and just not pay for it. And that, that, that really just comes down to how much it means to you. It's a game. It doesn't mean that much to me, to be honest. I, I'll enjoy the game regardless. So, And lastly for today, we have the first look at Disney Pixar's Elements. And it looks cute. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. You barely even see the main character or main characters. Um, it's just the fire girl walking through like a subway and stuff like that and then she meets the water guy uh, I believe Wade is his name she meets Wade and his water kind of extinguishes a little bit of her fire and they introduce them uh, her name is Ember his name is Wade and then that's pretty much it um, this is very much a early teaser 
but it looked good, and I usually like Pixar movies, so I'm probably gonna watch this, but it looks pretty good, and that makes me pretty excited. It comes out next June. I'm looking forward to it. Looks good. Uh, Pixar very, very rarely disappoints, and I can't remember the last time I was actually disappointed in a Pixar movie. It's been a while, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. Can't wait. And that's all the news for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know what you think about the Pokemon graphics. Do they bother you so much that you're not going to buy the game? Has this ruined the game for you? Uh, by the time you're watching this, I will probably be home playing Pokemon because I can't wait for it. Uh, but let me know if it bothers you so much that you're not going to play the game or if you were just never going to play the game because the last six games bothered you so much you aren't playing this one. Thanks for watching. We'll be back Monday with more nerd news. But over the weekend, we will have a Pokemon video going over for every Pokemon released with Scarlet and Violet, all the new Pokemon. And Saturday, we have a video for Phase 4 of the MCU. We'll be doing a ranking and discussing all of the movies and shows and specials that came out and how I feel about each one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Monday.